Ben Mesrick, author of the book that the new movie Dumb Money is based upon, had a great discussion today with host of CNBC about GameStop, Ryan Cohen, and Wall Street. They actually talked about GameStop twice during the show, so I'm going to play both clips for you back to back. First, just the host talking about Ryan Cohen becoming CEO, and then later, Ben joins them. Let's listen in to what they had to say, and then I want to mention a few things after that. Not a GameStop. Uh, just hours after being named CEO yesterday, Ryan Cohen sent a memo to employees that emphasized he's going to take dramatic steps to ensure uh, that the struggling video game retailer survives. In the email obtained by CNBC, Cohen wrote, Extreme frugality is required. Every expense at the company must be scrutinized under a microscope and all waste eliminated. The company has no use for delegators and money wasters. I expect everyone to treat company money like their own and lead by example. Cohen's not gonna receive a salary in his new role as chairman and CEO. He said, I'm not getting paid, so I'm either going down with the ship or turning the company uh, around. You've made the case, you know, it, is it Blockbuster or is it Best Buy? I mean, is it, there's plenty of, of geeky type employees that help with video games. They can help you get past certain obstacles. You can, you can go in and hang out and talk with these guys, but isn't it increasingly? Digital business. Yeah, a digital business. You download business. it like an app. That's what it's become. I mean, I, what is there, uh, there's like one blockbuster left, or there was, that may have been like in Alaska or something. Oh, really? Supposedly there was oh, one. Oh, there was left. a great documentary. Yeah. It was, on, it was on Netflix. It was called The Last Blockbuster. Yeah. It's great, great film. Is it? Is it that? No, is it gone? <laughs> is it still Oh, there? I don't know. I don't yeah, know. But for a while, and that was the whole reason everyone was short, and that was the whole reason everyone squeezed the shorts, and it became, you know, a movie. But now we're back to the reality is the, the bricks and mortars with the game supply. Does that really have a future? Does it have a viable future? I was in one maybe a month ago. Maybe you August. were. Oh, back to school shopping, we stopped by. The game, yeah, the game stuff. And what's up, they've what's got up? a lot of other stuff in there too. They do? Like some toys and different things. that they're, tr they're trying to mix it up a little, I think, to get people to come in. Yeah. It is still there, by the way, folks. It uh, is. Supposedly, is it, in Alaska? it is in Bend, Oregon. Uh -huh. Oh, in Oregon. Bend, Oregon. I thought it was in Alaska. According to the folks at Wikipedia. <laughs> Interesting. This should be like, uh, that's almost memorabilia. They should just. I guess they should just keep it open for that point. Tank. Billionaire activist investor Ryan Cohen is taking over as GameStop CEO, chairman and president with the video game retailers board, unanimously appointing him after Cohen had previously held the title of executive chairman. Cohen says that he will not be collecting a salary. Joining us right now is Ben Mesrick. He is the author of The Antisocial Network. That's the book that the new movie, Dumb Money, is based on. That film, by the way, goes nationwide today. And Ben, it's great to have you here. This uh, next part of it's kind of set you up for a sequel. <laughs> I it's mean, it's kind of amazing it. that Ryan Cohen is suddenly the CEO. The movie's coming out. I don't think it's a coincidence. I don't know, but it's kind of, it's like being 2021 all over again. It's kind of a, a moment where it feels like there's a sequel starting, you're right. I mean, the, the film has gotten a lot of buzz, uh, the book too, just because it kind of details how a band of average people, retail investors, were able to take down Wall Street. And yeah, it's, you know, regular people in their dorm rooms or, you know, single mothers or just people um, who were living in the worst part of the pandemic stuck at home um, fell in love with a the stock. They fell in love with GameStop because of Roaring Kitty, who is, to me, an American hero. He's a guy in his basement who basically felt like there was a value to this company that Wall Street was missing and he decided to talk about it. And it became this movement. It's almost revolutionary. And when you watch the movie, uh, there's a lot of anger. There's a lot was, of people who are right? mad. Was there any value in the company? You know, personally, I like the stock. <laughs> I'm, I'm, but I, don't take investment advice from me. I, I own Pets.com. If you were, the, if you were every company what's that went his name? The, Could he, if, if, if he didn't sell at the top, is, is he really smart money? Is, is I mean, I money? think it's more about people who believe in something because they love it. Um, they felt like it was being taken away and they felt like there's corruption. We were just talking about whether it's still going to go the way of, of Blockbuster. That was our conversation at the beginning of the show. Is it still going to be Blockbuster? Or? I believe that Ryan Cohen taking over could be, could be huge for this. I think he's a guy who's not taking a salary. He's doing it because he loves it. And I think, listen, I have a 13-year-old son. We walk into GameStop. And he is in love with the place. I like you going in to, to, to talk to the geeky story, guys. You can, field. if you're stuck on a video game, you can figure out how they to. They can get talk and talk. I know. And talk. I know. People love the products. 
How do you think, though, about the idea of him being a hero? We were talking with yeah. uh, with, the, with the authors uh, well, or the, 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 the screenwriters. The screenwriters. And by the way, I feel like I'm looking at a movie star. Oh. You are beautiful in the movie. Thank you. You've got Thank a you. big cameo. I, 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 I love I, it. They've taken lots of clips from us here on CNBC <laughs> and, and put it into the movie. But I, I think I'm, I think what we're all trying to understand is long term. And there's a piece of it, and you see it. I don't want to give away the end of the movie. Obviously, people know what happens at the end of the movie. Some people make money and some people don't make money. And right. so there is this question about whether people were following almost a fever dream of right. an idea right. that, that ultimately was to their own peril. So I right. interviewed dozens of people for this movie and not a single one cared about the money. That's the amazing thing about this story. All the people who bought this stock and buy AMC and buy you know, Bed Bath & whatever, it's not about making money. It's, it's a movement against not what they the feel is an unfair the playing field. But I, I think this too, like it, these guys stuck it to the man. I mean, that's and what it's about. good for them for doing it, but they yeah. may have stuck it to all their followers too. Everybody well, who, I mean, are, are they lemmings? The bag, I don't believe all that. All the bag holders, they, they left them with all the bag holders. They they what do you mean it's not about the money? Them. What is it? Everything's about the money. But have you talked to the people who bought GameStop? Yeah, they, they, they write in all the time and I say, how's your account? And, they, and then they don't answer but that's not what it's about. See, but it is about that. It then why? Right. Okay, but you can lose. But then why? You might as well just bet against. You might as well just go to at the NFL. Let me put it this way: Wall Street just go to DraftKings. Open its eyes because you're trying to treat the market as rational when the market is emotional. And never, I think Wall Street is rational. not looking and seeing what's happening. And, and where those nine where the mean stocks are now is is rational. They're back to where they started right now. But nine million people were gathered together for a moment buying a stock right. because they were fighting a battle. You but don't so, think that's going to happen again? You oh, think it's over? I think that's crazy. No, I think it may, may very well happen again, but the truth is Gabe Plotkin just bought a basketball team. Hey, so I, I it's, gave, hard, it's hard to look and, and at everyone, this Everyone and else say, is saying, well, it didn't, mean, it didn't matter about the money. I'm broke, but and, it didn't matter that, about the money. Listen, so there are people who, who are going to make money, money in the market. I think Wall Street is going to figure out a way to adjust and try to, but I think if you ignore the fact that millions and millions and millions of people were pissed off enough right. To buy game stock to stick it to one hedge fund, I think you're you're blinding yourself. Oh no, to what's I think really there's a lesson on. in this, which is this, the rapidity uh, and and the strength of a group of people, yeah. and just how quickly things can move. But I think it's the by the way that was true of uh, of even SVB when when Silicon yeah. Valley Bank went under. In a way, I know it's a different situation, but just yeah. the idea that a group of people could move their money this quickly. Nobody ever thought that these things could happen Instant. with such speed. Is, is this the end to short selling? And not that short sellers are always a bad thing. Look, there are times right. where a short seller comes along and, and identifies Enron, which was a complete fraud. Right. And, and, and that's something we have to be grateful to them for, but this is a way to make sure that short sellers aren't able to just push their advantage right. and uh, like hose. I'm not a fan. I should. have to be honest with you, and I know I get yelled at by people in finance but I find something morally repugnant about short selling personally because I feel like if your next door neighbor was about to lose their house and you made a bet and made money on that, we'd all agree that's that was morally average. wrong. I, I, I would agree with that yeah. aspect of short selling, but when it identifies fraud. I mean, that's great. That's a good like, answer came out of a bad action. You know, that's like the ends justify the means. Uh, You're still doing wrong by betting against a company. If you don't like that company, publicize it. If you don't, if you think there's something wrong with it, journalists do that. Lawmakers do that. You don't have to make money on someone else's failure. <laughs> I mean, you don't. Hey, listen, it's in Wall Street, a, everyone's always looking for another way to make money. The money They're making enough is, money. <laughs> no, but the aspect, the money aspect of it is often yeah. the only thing the that lever. identifies. It's the only thing that identifies the fraud. I mean, it's, it's a sad it's, state of it's, affairs it's if the only way people will do the right thing sure. is for money. I suppose, you know, but short, it's short, sellers, short sellers can be definitely heroes and on the right side of things, just like the cases that, that Becky talked about. It. If you it under, if you situation. uncover, Let's put it that if way. you uncover something that's that's underlying fraud, I mean that that's not the only one. Uh, no, they keep I the mean, market I honest. I mean, it's, if you yeah. come on and you and you hype it's a stock because you're right. long, right. it's right. no different than coming on and, I think and building something is different than breaking something down. Yeah, but no matter what, you're it, promoters exist separately. Something yeah. built yeah. on yeah. on, yeah. on, on air and balsa sure. wood should be exposed. Something I mean, built. Uh, so expose it, but I think that right. you don't wish short sellers were in FTX. You, you, can you don't wish okay. short sellers were in FTX to, to expose Ben Mesrek, them. we got to say thank you. Uh, <laughs> the film is called Dumb Money, um, and uh, we're looking at some smart money right there. So there coming up uh, on the other side of this break. Some As I've mentioned before, the double standard between how the financial media treats notoriously short hedge funds on Wall Street and how they treat individual investors never ceases to amaze me. I couldn't help but laugh a little when Sorkin brought up the fact that Gabe Pluckin 
recently bought a basketball team as if to say, look, he didn't lose, who's the dumb money now? But he neglects to mention that Pluckin's firm, Melvin Capital, had losses of roughly $7 billion because of their horrible bet against a company that people loved and their failure to practice proper risk management. And ultimately, that firm had to be injected with capital from Point72 and Citadel to the tune of $2.75 billion just to keep the firm afloat. And even with that, Melvin ultimately did not make it after Point72 and Citadel demanded their money back. So it's just amusing to me that even after all of this, the press still tries to paint the situation as if Plotkin is a genius, all the while neglecting to mention that he had his you-know-what handed to him due to his own bad decisions and the resilience of individual investors. And this highlights what's been going on for decades in the financial press. They treat hedge funds on Wall Street, including notoriously short hedge funds like royalty, completely ignoring when those firms commit fraud or rip off investors or implode because they made bad decisions with their clients' money, or when they short company stocks into oblivion. The financial press ignores all of that, and instead they welcome these fund managers on national television with open arms as they bash and sneer at the companies they dislike and are shorting. So in other words, they establish massively over-leveraged short positions in the stocks of the companies they dislike. They then go on national television and bash those companies while simultaneously being heralded as geniuses by the financial media, and then they ultimately profit off of their own deprecation of the company's reputations. They target companies, they short those companies' stocks, they bash those companies' reputations in public, and then they get rich off of their own deprecation of those companies. This has been going on for decades, and individual investors have had enough. And so, at an increasing rate, individual investors have begun making their own financial decisions without relying on what Wall Street or their talking heads in the financial media say. And this infuriates Wall Street. It infuriates their paid actors in the financial press. Why? Because in their view, the independence of the individual investor stands in the way of them making money. Think about it. If you are making your own financial decisions, then you don't need a hedge fund on Wall Street or their paid actors on television to make those decisions for you. So because individual investors are making their own decisions, the financial press now feels the need to minimize and rebut every success of the individual investor to try and make the public think that they still need the talking heads in the financial press and the opinions of their overlords on Wall Street. It's that simple. Additionally, hedge funds now have to think twice before targeting a legitimate company with short and distort campaigns because there are now millions of individual investors who, of their own volition, will not put up with it. I'll briefly touch on Ryan Cohen becoming CEO. I think it's a great thing for the company. While Cohen has essentially been serving as an interim CEO following the departure of Matt Furlong, the company has done well. I mean, just look at these highlights from the last earnings report. In Q2, GameStop had a loss of only $2.8 million, compared to a loss of $108.7 million during the same quarter a year ago. That is a reduction of roughly 97.4% in just one year. That is fantastic progress, and I have much respect for Ryan not accepting a salary. He's put his own money into the company, and he is refusing to accept a salary. This way, he is clearly incentivized to make GameStop the best company it can possibly be. As he put it, he'll either go down with the ship or turn the company around. I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for GameStop. Now, I cannot speak for everyone when I say this, but I can speak for myself. As I've mentioned multiple times over the past couple years or so, I support GameStop and I support AMC because I want these companies to survive and I want change in the financial markets. Let me be clear. I want these companies to survive regardless of who the company executives are. I do not want mass layoffs. I do not want there to be voids in the lives of customers and I do not want the negative fallout of all of that hitting the economy. It's that simple. For these reasons, I support these companies and I want them to make it. I'm tired of companies going under and being forced to lay off all of their employees because they are disliked by large firms on Wall Street. I'm tired of it. Today, there are many, many problems plaguing the financial markets, and as individual investors, we would like to see these issues resolved. And so, as I often say, as retail investors, what we want is simple, and nothing we're advocating for is beyond the realm of reason. Individual investors want a free, fair, and transparent stock market. We want large institutions to be held accountable for their actions. We want retail investors to have access to the same real-time data from exchanges' better private feeds, which is currently only available to Wall Street. 
Street. We want large institutions to be required to report on their short positions more frequently. We want an end to excessive amounts of failures to deliver, and we want entities who fail to deliver on their obligations to be held accountable. We want an end to payment for order flow. We want increased competition among market makers, and we want all of retail investors' orders to be routed directly to lit, transparent exchanges rather than opaque dark pools. Ultimately, it's simple. What we want is a stock market that offers a truly level playing field for all investors. And that's it for this video. Please leave a like on this video so we can get this information out to more people. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.